During the recent Energy Week, Russian petrochemicals were named as a sector of advanced development, producing high-value-added products. Our traditional conversation today on the current issues of the petrochemical agenda is with Dmitry Alexandrovich Akishin, the general director of the consulting company Implementa. Hello, Dmitry Alexandrovich. We are pleased to welcome you to our studio. Hello, I am also very pleased to be here again. I would like to start the conversation by clarifying the situation in the global market. In recent years, the petrochemical industry has shown quite contradictory dynamics. The growth of production, the introduction of new capacities in China and other regions have been combined with a weakening of demand and signs of overproduction of certain types of petrochemical products. Analysts describe the market situation as surplus. How would you assess the validity of such an evaluation? Well, the assessment, if we speak at a very high level, is quite fair. But naturally, we must consider that over the last five years, many events have occurred that are unprecedented for the global economy and for chemistry in particular. So, I will mention a few such factors, what chemistry is in general. Petrochemicals are, in fact, an industry, well, not to say huge. If we take any product, it is not comparable to oil or gas in terms of volume. In tonnage, well, the same ethylene is produced at 200 to 220 to 225 million tons worldwide. That's how much it is now. 10 to 20 years ago, it was much less. Since individual capacity made a significant contribution to global production, quite clear, sharp cycles were observed in the chemical industry, even for large tonnage products not to mention small tonnage ones. And these cycles were understood and seen by everyone, and then the year 20 came. Firstly, by that time, the volumes of the industry had increased. Secondly, a large number of new projects were announced, which naturally were postponed. And now we are in a cycle stage that began even before the year 2020. And it still has not ended. Capacities are being introduced. Previously there were, and demand is not keeping up with it. And demand is not keeping up. Previously, five million tons of capacity were introduced. Well, five to six per year for the same ethylene. Now it's about ten. So these are already quite significant volumes. And demand, on the contrary, is slowly slowing down. There are many factors that are unusual now, but nevertheless, the pressure on the industry is great, and chemistry, on a global scale, is no longer such a reliable driver. According to analysts' forecasts, by the year 2028, it is expected that approximately 24% of capacities for the production of large-class products will be stopped at a loss. Yes, McKenzie indicates, for example, that today two capacities of 2.6 million for ethylene production are at risk. In this situation, when there is a decline and when some, so to speak, closure of capacities falls on Europe, will there be a reformatting of the market? Is there a likelihood of shifting petrochemical production to Asia? Well, it is already happening, in fact. Now, in general, the trend is towards large, super-efficient capacities taking the lead. At the same time, of course, small capacities will not completely cease to exist. If we are talking about the closure of some millions of tons of capacities, then naturally they will be replaced by new, more efficient capacities. As for Europe, this is a separate case. From all sides, the chemical industry there is under pressure. Energy resources, even the same expensive gas. Oil is also being supplied from more distant substitution. It's moving towards more expensive grades. Yes, yes. Substitution for more. Not even grades, but simply the logistics are worsening. So here, it's a shot in the foot for the Russian oil industry, and in fact, for themselves as well. At the same time, it hit quite hard. 
As a result, the chemical industry that existed there, well, you can't say it was wonderful, right? It was difficult due to expensive energy resources, and it has become even more difficult. Plus, there's American policy aimed at creating conditions to transfer those same technological capacities to the USA. So, closure is possible, yes, and actually 2.6 is very, a kind of approximate optimism. Not optimistic, very optimistic. In fact, up to 40% of the capacities out of 22, I think million tons could be lost. But at the same time, it's important to understand that it's not only large-scale products, and not even so much large-scale products. There's quite a bit of specialized chemistry, complex, high-tech and high-margin, which should naturally be noted, so there will be a double blow here. It's also GDP. How does Russian petrochemistry look on the global stage, whose share, I might be wrong, is, I think, 1.3% of the global scale? Do we have a high potential for catch-up development in our industry? Well, I think we should start with whether there is a goal, as they say, to catch up and overtake. Probably, first of all, we should note what has happened over the last almost 10 years. About 10 years ago, the previous strategy was described for the chemical industry. In general, it's impossible to say that the tasks have been solved. At the same time, it's absolutely impossible to say that nothing has happened. We are now building global, huge, even by world standards, plants. Sibir is being built accordingly, Ust Luga is being built. They wouldn't have appeared without the significant work done over the past few years. Again, a support system was created, specialized for this. Previously, petrochemistry was essentially an appendage of oil refining, but now it has emerged as a separate story. But in terms of medium and small-scale production, frankly, things are worse. Many chains that existed back in the Soviet Union are broken, disrupted. I don't even know what word to use. And, in principle, before talking about some kind of leading pace or strong position in the global market, probably, first of all, we need to solve the problem of a strong position in the domestic market, because there are a lot of chemical products products, tens of thousands of names, in general, dozens. And in Russia, several thousand are produced. Well, that is, only 10 to 15 percent of the range is produced in Russia. So on one hand, we have a market that is large in terms of range. But our traditional problem is low demand. Now is the time for such large capacities, so INK, Sibur were mentioned. Usluga, they exist and will find their place in the market due to competitiveness. And further, the deeper you go into chemistry, the less important the raw material component becomes, it doesn't play such a critical role. Therefore, competing even in the domestic market is not so easy anymore. You mentioned that petrochemistry has made great progress, specifically in large-scale projects, in polymer production. This is quite obvious. And it's quite clear that we are indeed claiming the role of a net exporter here. What is the horizon for further growth? Is there a possibility to hope for progress in high-value added products as a goal in the near future? There is always the possibility to hope. I say this because I'm an optimist by nature, probably. Well, at least for that reason. Overall, if you look at the chain and the approaches to creating or reviving, developing the chemical industry, there aren't actually that many, but none of them are simple. That is, in general, if you look at the market now, sometimes we get requests. Like, what should we produce from chemistry? 
Answer. I don't know what you have. Currently, there is practically no project where you just gather, build, start and earn money. And it's a reliable investment. Business nowadays, especially complex chemical, high-tech ones, is traditionally, like any complex chemical, high-tech business, high risk. Protectionism in foreign markets is thriving, but that's already a fact. And to say that we will now set the rules of the game, we will form them fairly, while others directly impose duties, introduce special subsidies for their producers, and create special conditions at the regional level among neighboring countries. Well, it's true. You can do whatever you want, but it won't always work. Additional conditions are needed. Synergy must be sought. And I actually see a path that has been mentioned many times, and in Soviet times it was implemented this way. In the strategy, I saw it written down. Cluster development. But where to start it from? Today, chemistry, big chemistry, is the domain of large companies. But large companies find it difficult and probably unnecessary to delve into small products. Meanwhile, small companies cannot build, for example, an ethylene plant. Because they don't have that much money, and they won't even be given that much, they wouldn't even dare. To build a plant that is ten times larger than their existing business. Therefore, the step taken in terms of creating complexes for the production, processing of ethane, naphtha, and state support is very important. Next, accordingly, we need to think about how to provide the market with enough raw materials so that those small companies can make a large number of products from these raw materials. And the idea of such chemical infrastructure projects could be very timely, where, for example, a company builds, but with partially state funds. At the same time, the condition is that this company can keep part of the product for itself, and part is guaranteed to be given to the market. That is, a form of public-private partnership. Exactly. You mentioned the domestic market, the need for its development, and in this regard, I would like, in connection with the demand analysis, to focus on this. What is the possibility, the likelihood of demand for petrochemical solutions, polymer solutions in industries such as industry, construction and housing and utilities? We have the potential for growth in the domestic market. But again, this is the domain of small companies. These are small consumers, like 500 tons, 100 tons, 1 ton per year. That is, they print their, produce their plates, basins, somewhere pipes, they are larger. And at the same time, many times, again, at the regional level, I received the question, they say, we want to invest, but we don't know where. That is, we are creating, and have already created, a large enough number of industrial parks, special economic zones in the regions. And some of them are super successful, while some, in fact, just can't. Develop, find their niche, probably. Even get their first project, because, in fact, it's unclear what to produce. And the region can't say, regional development institutions can't say, because they are not narrow, specialized in chemistry. And in the end, investors, there are 20 million rubles, or 100 million rubles. This is, in principle, well, the scale. That there is the question of choosing a direction and creating some kind of niche product, right? Yes, yes. In fact, in fact, yes. So, the market is complex. It is necessary to form a list of projects in each region. All regions are interested in investments. 
Известно, что у российской нефти First of all, dependence on equipment, technologies, reagents, which have always been mainly of an imported nature. Over this year, we touched on this problem last year as well. Has there been any weakening of this dependence? Have we made a step forward here? Well, let's say a year is a micro period for summing up results. I know for sure that industrial companies are working or helping other companies to work towards creating certain catalysts, special chemicals. I won't give specific examples now, but new products of an auxiliary nature that were needed on the market are generally being produced. To say that the problem is solved 100%, of course, is impossible, but there is progress. Here, look, there is one important constraint, and there is still no clear understanding of how to solve it. Even technologies on paper exist in the country, and some, in fact, have remained since the Soviet Union. In principle, there is even a description and documentation for production. It's just that no one has built according to this documentation, or no one living today has built it. So, in general, there are some outlines, but... But this is, yes, this is just groundwork. It cannot be said that this is, of course, a normal project, and whether it will be super competitive. But, nevertheless, there is groundwork, and even... But the problem is that even if the technology is described, it can even be implemented, if no one has tried it yet, the risk that it will not work, explode, produce the wrong product, well, there can be a million risks, actually. Mm-hmm. And this is the risk that companies cannot take, because production, going back to the very beginning, is expensive. And the risks are so great that large companies have other things to do. They have many projects, and small ones, they cannot risk such volumes at all. Today, making forecasts is probably a thankless task, with such an unstable and uncertain background parameter, external, so to speak, background, and so on. But still, I would like to conclude our conversation with this question. Are you generally optimistic in terms terms of short-term and medium-term prospects for the development of the industry. In the short term, I am more of a realist, and it is unlikely that we should expect any super leaps in the short term, but in the medium term, we can get effects. But as I said, our tasks have not changed much over 10 years, and the tools need to be slightly adjusted. During this time, it is possible to adjust the tools with which the industry will develop and even take the first steps, already quite large steps, which could give the industry educational activity. Thank you. Thank you.